welcome to tea with our ping. Losing face and saving face are often considered a very Asian thing. The Chinese Communist Party is no exception. The CCP has always been mindful of its public image and particularly sensitive to any criticism. But the party doesn't blush a bit when it claims to be always great, glorious, and correct. Whenever the party is criticized, it would claim that the feelings of 1.3 billion Chinese people are hurt. But the CCP has only some 90 million members. So who has licensed the party to represent the will of 1.3 billion Chinese? The headlines from the past two weeks, I'm afraid, might have seriously hurt the party's feelings again. Let's begin from the most recent one. A massive database was leaked from Shanghai, China, and revealed that 1.95 million Chinese Communist Party members have infiltrated some of the world's biggest corporations. That includes IBM, 3M, PepsiCo, Boeing, HHBC, and some Western consulates. Sky News first reported on this and called it a major leak that lifts the lid on the Chinese Communist Party. Now, we haven't heard anything from the Chinese government officials, but the Chinese state media have not been silent. Have a look at this headline from CCTV. The hype from Western media about the so-called CCP list is a complete anti-China scheme. Here is another from Global Times. The five eyes are blind. The article claimed that the five eyes the alliance between five countries, Australia, Canada, New Zealand, and the UK, and the United States are following America's lead to smear the CCP and have twisted the reality of the Chinese society. A third, also from Global Times, screamed that a mole from inside the party sold their home country to anti-China forces. Well, is that really the case? Like I mentioned in the previous video, one needs to be cautious when reading the Chinese state media. Even many Chinese officials themselves don't believe in them. A popular joke is that when you read their newspaper, you should read it upside down. What do these Communist Party branches do anyway? Let's hear from the Chinese officials. Qi Yu, the current party secretary at the Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs, said in 2017 that the corporate party organizations must, quote, organically integrate party activities with the firm's production in order to support companies' healthy development. Here are some specific examples per the Epoch Time reports. The CCP party branch at Mars Food in Shanghai provided products at an event organized by the local authorities to promote the party's history. Party members at IBM's Shenzhen branch joined activities with the theme, stay true to the original heart and follow the party. Party branch at the Westing Beijing Financial Street, part of the Marriott Hotel chain, stitched Chinese national flags together and studied the spirit of Long March the infamous Red Army retreat in the 1930s. If this sounds a bit too distant for you, what if I told you that similar things have happened here in the USA? A recent investigative report by Axios revealed that a suspected Chinese spy, Fang Fang, developed extensive ties with US officials, including a congressman. According to the report, Fang targeted up-and-coming politicians in the Bay Area in California and around the country. She used the campaign fundraising, networking, and the romantic relationships to cozy up to them. Per the report, quote, The case was a big deal because there were some really, really sensitive people that were caught up in the intelligence network, said a current senior U.S. intelligence official. And she's far from the only one. In July, the FBI director Christopher Wray made a stunning statement that they are opening a new China-related counterintelligence case about every 10 hours. 
He also said, quote, of the nearly 5,000 active FBI counterintelligence cases currently underway across the country, almost half are related to China, and mentioned that China might be compromising the very organizations working on essential COVID-19 research. And in September, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo reminded us that the CCP campaigns have increasingly aimed at state-level officials. Their goal, he said, is to make Americans receptive to Beijing's form of authoritarianism. In February, he cited a Chinese think tank report that analyzed attitudes of 50 governors towards China. Indeed, last year, a Chinese government-backed think tank in Beijing produced a report that assessed all 50 of America's governors on their attitudes towards China. They labeled each of you friendly, hardline, or ambiguous. I'll let you decide where you think you belong. Someone in China already has. Many of you indeed in that report are referenced by name. This is something very serious to think about. Case in point, in 2017, California State Senator Joe Anderson introduced a legislation to condemn CCP's persecution of Falun Gong, a peaceful Buddhist meditation. But the Chinese consulate in San Francisco began a campaign to stop it. They sent unsigned letters and made phone calls to the state senators. They said it was anti-China and anti-human, and their strategy worked. The resolution, which calls for greater human rights in China, was eventually shelved. Another example, in February, Chinese consulate in Chicago tried to get Wisconsin Senate President Roger Ross to introduce a resolution to praise how well the party state had controlled the virus outbreak. Remember, that was just one month after China locked down Wuhan city. The global pandemic was about to begin. And the Chinese officials went above and beyond in this propaganda campaign. They even drafted the resolution for the senator and sent it to him by email. To their dismay, Senator Ross did just the opposite. He introduced a resolution to condemn Beijing's virus cover and other human rights abuses. The CCP's mission is divide, conquer, and infiltrate. They are dictatorial by nature, and now they are trying to exploit the open society that we have in the US and change our way of life. Our freedom and our values are at risk. Let's also give a fair chance to the other side and find out what the party state has to say about all of this. A few weeks ago, Professor Di Dongsheng, Associate Dean of the School of International Studies at the Renmin University of China in Beijing, gave a speech in Shanghai, China to a large conference. The event was hosted by the media Guancha. It had 3,000 live Chinese audience members and was watched 20 million times in two days. Professor Di bragged about CCP's old friends from the Wall Street who could lobby on his behalf, and he shared a story to show his point. Let's hear what he has to say. We are in the United States, we are in the United States, we are in the United States, 啊,所以我們有路徑依賴, uh, Well, what an eye-opening presentation from Professor D. And he was right. What he disclosed was more than just a little bit explosive, and perhaps a bit more than he should. Like the professor said, the CCP believes that they can use money to fix anything, anywhere in the world. The CCP is infiltrating the West strategically, through economic influence, espionage, honey traps, and even all-out threat. This is in reality an unlimited warfare on Western democracies. Let that sink in for a moment. 
In a previous episode, I talked about two various whistleblowers. Even though Professor D did not intend to blow the whistle, I think for America and the rest of the free world, he had done just that. So let's thank this unconventional whistleblower for helping wake us up to a new reality. That's enough food for thought today. If you wish to learn about the CCP's academic threat specifically, our next episode will be just for you. Like a Japanese proverb said, if man has no tea in him, he's incapable of understanding truth and beauty. Perhaps now is a perfect time to have a cup of tea. So stay safe. Until next time, peace and tea be with you. Thank you.